Hi guys, welcome to the second episode of Monzo Insider. My name's Ross, I'm a filmmaker living in London. Look at this, look, see on here? A lot of the work I do is online and digital, so branded content, music videos, comedy. This means I get to do lots of different things, including writing. Next, we cut to Ross as a producer. He's on the phone. Producing. And one last thing, director needs to have a microphone. What do you mean he can't have one? Directing. And we'll cut there, guys. Oh, for goodness sake. And editing. Cut there, guys. Cut there, guys. Cut there, guys. For goodness sake. Nailed it. I travel quite a bit, and when I first got my Monzo card, I had quite a few questions about using it in foreign countries. The place I headed for my answers was the help section of their handy app. And while it's great to have so much information in one place, I did find myself lost in a bit of a vortex of irrelevant answers. And that made me think, surely Monzo has an easier way of doing this, a smarter way for me to find the answer to my question. Okay, quick update. I did a search online, and I've come across something called machine learning, which is a way for computers to interpret human language. And I guess it must be used in like search engines like Google and things like that. It seems like a pretty scary concept. Machines learning human language and then adapting it and using it as they want. And it also says artificial intelligence will soon be used to replace thousands of jobs the world over. Well, that means very soon there could be a robot doing my job. Time to go to Monzo and find out the truth. Okay guys, I'm here in the Monzo office. Time to get some answers. Hi Nigel, yeah. I'm Hi. Ross. Hi Ross, good. Hi. Right. you. Yeah. So yeah, do you want to just introduce yourself and Tell me what's your job here at Monzo and what, what, do, you, what do you do day to day? Yeah, uh, hey guys, I'm a data scientist here at Monzo. Day to day I work with everything uh, in relation to our data. Everything from getting into a database, cleaning it, presenting dashboards, KPIs, all the way to training machine learning models, evaluating and deploying them, AI, cool stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, so it's, so it's interesting. So obviously a big part of what you do involves kind of machine learning. Uh -huh. I've been trying to learn about it myself. Um, and it seems like quite a big concept. Could you simplify it for me? Yeah, so machine learning is uh, basically feeding a, a, a model, a computer, a lot of data and letting it uh, learn by itself, finding patterns within the data by itself instead of explicitly crafting rules. So for example, if you want to have an image recognizer that can tell you what apples are, instead of telling it, oh, it's a semi-round fruit with red or green skin, maybe with a stem, you can just feed it tons of images of apples and then it will just find the patterns within those images and then come up with uh, that classification. Okay, cool. So what are you doing with that? Well, right now we are building uh, an algorithm for our help screen. The reason we're doing that is because we get a lot of uh, customer support uh, questions and we have, we have been you know, answering them for like two years now. So we have a lot of those questions and we want to find a way to use those questions and help our customers. So in our help screen, we're trying to build a search, right? So search is hard because a, a naive keyword search will fail if the word in your search query doesn't match a word in the help content. So using a model, it, make, it makes the search a lot smarter. So it guesses and kind of knows what you mean, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so you can, you can see the help screen. And then we have a new search bar up here. So I type in this. And for example, if I type in limits, uh, so the options it brings up this is an easy one because you can just match uh, on the word limit, right? But if a user asks something like increase my cap, the model understands cap is a synonym for limits and it pulls out you know, things related to that too. One of the things I noticed was I, I had an issue recently where I was traveling and I had a query and it, mm -hmm. it took me ages to search through the help menu and try and find the answer. So why would that address that issue? Yeah, so for traveling, where did you go? I was in Greece actually Greece. for okay. a wedding and it was, it was 
I'm from Northern Ireland and it was like 35 degrees the whole time <laughs> and I, it was, it was intense, it was yeah. intense, yeah. Say you just landed uh, in Greece, got off the plane and you're wondering, oh, does my card work in Greece? So if that's the, how you frame the question, if, if you want a search function to work well, it has to recognize that Greece represents a foreign country, a country that's abroad, right? right? And course. from that, we pull out the questions that are pertinent, that are relevant to you, like things, how, what do I do when I travel abroad type questions. And that's exactly what our model does, you know, instead of typing in, uh, I am abroad right now, you can just type in, I'm in Greece and it surfaces the relevant health content that, oh, what do you do when you, when you travel abroad? So the model by itself knows the concept of a foreign country instead of us having to pass it a whole list of all the countries and all the cities in the world. Obviously, there's a lot of scope there for so many answers and so many words. So how do you select the most likely responses based on a certain sentence? What, how do you work that out? Yeah, uh, <laughs> to a layman it might look like magic, right? But there really isn't any magic involved. First, we, we use machine learning to encode a question into a series of numbers because that's all a computer can do. A computer can't understand words. You have to uh, convert those words, sentences and paragraphs into numbers. And then if a question comes in, you convert them to numbers. And then with all the answers, if answered historically, we convert all those answers into numbers as well. Then we can see from the numbers in the question, which one does it match? Uh, which is the closest match to all the an answers in the answer pool? Okay, great. So, um, do you hear that? You're right. N never mind, never mind. Um, so, um, where were we? Um, so where do you get all the data that you then turn into the numbers? How does that come about? All the questions and answers are, live in our uh, databases. So when we train the model, all we, we don't use any personal, uh, personal information or sensitive information. And uh, the most important thing is uh, everything's private and even if someone you know, hacked into our systems and stole the model file, all they would see is just a bunch of numbers. So Right, of course, mm -hmm. okay. So if I admit to you that I lost my card when I was drunk, you're not gonna, it's not yeah. gonna go out in the wider, wider world? No, okay. I will not be able to trace cool. who asked that. Okay, good. Surely you must be able to use this to solve maybe some other problems that you have here, if it if it's, can maybe be applied to other areas. Because we have a model that understands basic language uh, and has like, a, some degree of common sense, we can use it to you know, help our internal customer support team maybe suggest replies quickly. Never, never a chat bot because those <laughs> suck still right now. Yeah. Uh, we can suggest replies quickly. We can tag messages for them. We can see what messages are considered urgent. We can tell them what are how, how to solve this issue of customers having by telling them what actions they should take. And then we can also use this, these things to do uh, recommendation systems. You want to be a platform eventually, so. Maybe you can use machine learning to uh, kind of predict what services you're likely to be interested in and then recommend them to you. Okay, the big question, mm -hmm. the reason that I'm actually here. Nigel, can you tell me, is AI going to become so intelligent that it takes over our phones and uses them to buy loads of expensive apps and bankrupt us all? <laughs> no. Why would an AI want, want, want to do that? You know, when, when, you, <laughs> when you train a model, you gotta... Robots are, robots are evil, man. They're yeah. right to get us. Robots are also really <laughs> dumb. And robots are good at doing one thing really well, but humans are good at doing many things at a mediocre level. Yeah. And in, in life, that's more useful, you know? Right. But uh, yeah, in, in reality, uh, machine learning is, is good for very narrow domains. Our model understands language at a very basic level and, and at a very specific Monzo customer support domain. You know, our model can't understand Shakespeare, right? A synopsis of a play. And, right, you know? okay, okay. So yeah, I think, I think you're fine. Okay, good. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for clarifying that for me. So yeah, so to round up, sounds like machine learning is really amazing. Not only for Monzo and banking and health, it mm. must have like far wider reaching usage in the real world. So um, yeah, thanks for your time. Cool. Thanks, boss. Well, guys, that's the end of the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. We've certainly learned a few things about machine learning, and it's good to know that my job's safe and I'm not going to be replaced by a robot anytime soon. <laughs>